Hi, this is Olivier Blanchard with Futurum Research. I'm here at the Desso System 3D Experience Forum with Carl D'Souza and Sumanth Kumar with uh, Desso System. And we're here to speak about the Living Heart Project. So guys, welcome. Thank um, you. Would you like to introduce yourselves real quick? Tell us, tell us who you are, what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Sumanth Kumar. I'm uh, responsible for uh, strategy, market development, and marketing for the Simulia brand and I'm based out of Simulia headquarters, that's uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Hi, I'm Carl D'Souza. I'm a solution consultant in the virtual human modeling team, which is part of Simulia. I'm also okay. based in Providence, Rhode Island. Cool, excellent, well, welcome. Um, all right, the Living Heart Project. Tell us a little bit about it. I guess we'll take turns. Sure, we're very excited about it. Um, so back in uh, 2013, when uh, Bernard Charles, our uh, CEO, challenged us, uh, to look beyond product, to look at product, nature, and life. Uh, we in the brand looked at what are the things that we could do to expand the audience as well as the expand the scope of what we are delivering as part of simulation. And uh, we came up with several initiatives, uh, brand initiatives. And one of the initiatives that uh, we started at that point, uh, late 2013, early 2014, uh, was the Living Heart Project. And uh, the goal of the Living Heart Project was to uh, bring the community together, uh, not just uh, from Dassault Systems, but the community of uh, surgeons, researchers, and uh, medical device uh, users community uh, into the pro uh, Living Heart Project community and to uh, share the information and knowledge. And I'll let uh, Carl give more details about the project. Yeah, so to continue from there, the basic idea was that because cardiovascular disease is such a, is a you know, leading cause of mortality worldwide, we were trying to figure out a way by which we could use our expertise in modeling and simulation and the technologies of Dassault Systems to be able to develop solutions that could be, that could be translated into actual patient care. And so as Suman said, we united this community of experts and <clears throat> through their collective knowledge and tools, we began to develop a computational model, a three-dimensional anatomically accurate model of a human heart. And so this is what we have today, it's called the Living Heart Model. And using this model, we can, or our collaborators can study how heart disease progresses, uh, as well as how different types of treatments, such as medical devices, or surgical options, or even drugs, uh, might be able to address the problem of heart disease. And so that's what we're trying to do with this project. Right. Wow, that's really cool. So it's not just a mechanical model, it's also, it's, it's biological. I mean, it goes down to the materials, right? Absolutely. So it is a multi-physics, multi-science model. Yeah. Uh, so multi-scale model, in, in effect, uh, we, we have structures, we have uh, fluids through the blood flow, uh, we have the electromechanical uh, response uh, with the electrical signals uh, in the heart. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, what uh, Carl can talk about is how uh, the heart is multi-scale. Yeah, so what's, I think what's, what's really important to continue from where someone left off is not just that it's a static model sitting there and we've put all this stuff into it. It's really that you as a user can take this model and change it. So you can introduce disease conditions, which at the end of the day is what people really want to study. Right. right? A, a, a healthy living heart is, is nice, but what you, what you really want to do is understand how disease affects heart. So it's very easy for users to go in and modify the heart conditions to introduce things like uh, heart attacks or infarctions or valvular disorders or even arrhythmias into the heart. Uh, and then be able to study how the device they have in mind or they're developing might be able to address that problem. So that's, that's really what we're trying to do with that. And as someone pointed out, initially we began with the electrical fluids and structural multi-scale type of behavior, which was mostly happening at the whole heart organ level. And in, in, in very recent time, just this, this, this past year, we've been able to simulate effects happening at the cellular level and looking at how they then transform to when, the, when you think about a full three-dimensional anatomically accurate heart. So that's very exciting for us yeah. and it's a true example. I think it's a great example of multi-physics, multi-scale in action. Yeah. That's really amazing. Okay, so I hear that uh, there's a big announcement coming. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Is there a scoop? Sure. Uh, we are very excited to announce that the Living Heart uh, model is available on 3D experience on the cloud. 
uh, which is uh, uh, which is a game bra a game changer for us because uh, it was available only on premise and uh, there were a uh, lot of uh, uh, difficulties installing and configuring on premise but uh, by making it available on the cloud uh, you are reducing the amount of installation and configuration and the amount of uh, time that it takes to set up the living heart model and to gain the benefits of the living heart model. So we are very excited to announce that it is available on the cloud and uh, this, is, uh, this has been something that we have been working towards uh, but it, is, uh, it, it became available just a week ago uh, so it is available on the, on the cloud now. That's outstanding. Yeah. So I think if I could if I could add a little sure. bit to sure. that, I think two places where we are seeing it already being uh, the cloud really bringing benefits is one in uh, access to really high performance computing uh, resources. So for instance, this this problem with it, uh, that we're looking at right now, the multi-scale problem involving the cell to organ level, that is a computationally very challenging problem involving many millions of degrees of freedom. And by using by leveraging resources on the cloud, that's now available to researchers, to academics, people who might not otherwise have had access to that kind of technology. On the other hand, I think what the cloud does, again to the benefits the one pointed out, is it allows a much wider range of audience to access this technology, <coughs> in particular clinicians. Right? So say you're a clinician and you're working on a specific uh, uh, case of a patient in front of you, and you're not really a simulation guy or, an, or a finite element an analyst, you can now avail of this technology on the cloud and very simply you know, deploy the advantages of the model. And we're seeing that happening and that's an area which we expect to grow quite significantly moving forward. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a key point where uh, until now we expected that anybody that worked on the Living Heart project to be very, uh, to, to have the expertise on simulation and analysis. Uh, with Living Heart on the cloud, with on the platform, what we are able to do is uh, take that model and make it available uh, to somebody who doesn't understand anything about simulation and analysis. And that's very powerful. And with the ability on the cloud, we can take it to mobile as well. So imagine uh, somebody uh, in the hospital, uh, an intern, a physician, or researcher, being able to look at uh, the personalized data of a person on, on a mobile tablet and being able to make decisions on the virtual model before they operate on the real person. Uh, that gives a lot of power and it really brings simulation and science uh, to the forefront where we are taking it, uh, where, where we are taking all the simulation, the technology we have, from not only to the businesses, but being able to provide that to the consumer now. Right. Okay, so that's that's actually a really good point. So it, it seems that you know the the whole project started with a, a kind of a, a very specialized nucleus of specialists, right, and experts. Now it's expanding to clinicians and, and to a, a broader yes. user group, uh, and it's it's adopting a little bit more of a of a B two C model. Yes. Um, so can you can you talk about really briefly about how this can actually impact patients uh, in the end and and how how the patient fits in that ecosystem. Uh, not necessarily now, but also in the future. Sure. So, so already yeah. today, as someone pointed out, we have a few, today it's maybe you know, a handful of uh, clinical institutes, hospitals who are part of the project, who are using uh, the heart model technology to create patient-specific hearts. Uh, this is especially true in the congenital heart disease areas, so the yeah. children born with abnormalities, because there is no prior experience. Every, every time you, someone is born with a disease, it's most likely unique. And that's where simulation and modeling is playing, I think, a leading role in guiding physicians as to what kind of interventional uh, procedure the surgeries should be done. Uh, today that's happening kind of at a small scale, we're demonstrating the concept, we're building up confidence in clinicians, but as you said, moving forward, I think that's, that's where things are heading towards in, you know, when you talk about personalized health, yeah. this is what people have in mind. And I think the heart is just one, uh, one example, it's you know, by no means what simulation can do, and we're certainly expanding this approach, we're seeing a lot of interest from external clinical communities in applying this kind of approach of computational tools in conjunction with a community of experts, like you pointed out, to uh, to be applied everywhere. And, you know, we're already seeing examples in in, um, in in orthopedics, in brain modeling, in eye surgery, in foot modeling, in a lot of a lot of different areas. So certainly, this is where uh, to get back to your question. Yeah. We think we're headed. 
and one of the other uh, beautiful things with, uh, with uh, this project is that uh, when you think of a physician or a surgeon, if they want to try out multiple iterations of uh, surgeries or uh, try out different devices, you can try it out virtually with no consequences. Uh, you can't really try it out on a, on a real human person, but you can try out literally hundreds of variations of medical devices or alternative surgery options and you can figure out what works best for that per particular person. And that is the power of what simulation can bring uh, to personalized healthcare. So much better yeah. outcomes, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that's amazing. Okay, so if people want to find out more about this, where can they go to, uh, to do that? Is there a website, is there a page? Probably, sure. yeah, so go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, probably the best start point is 3ds.com slash heart. Okay. That's where they can find out about the heart project, and of course yeah. they can contact us Yes. Uh, at any time to learn more. Excellent. Well, guys, Samant, uh, Carl, thank you very much. This is Olivier Blanchard signing off. Thank you.